Hello everyone, it's Natasha from Treasure Books. If you're looking for a quick 15 minute craft idea, then this video is for you. We are making an oversized matchbook journal or a journal companion using a file folder or really anything that you have on hand. So what is a matchbook journal? The idea comes from the old little matchbooks where you open up the little box and then inside you have all the matches, right? Only instead of the matches, we have journal pages and then it can be held closed like this. There's a few different variations. I'll quickly show you what I have here. You can have your pages bound up the top like this. You can have them bound on the side like this. You can have them bound into the cover like this three hole pamphlet stitch. You can have them tiny, tiny. You can have them large. You can have them quite large. For example, this one here, I made to fit perfectly inside this journal cover, which will eventually become a journal. And this is like a little journal companion. So that's gonna live right in there. So there's many little variations that you can make with this project. And I'm also going to show you this idea. So let's jump right in. Of course, we are starting off with a file folder. If you don't have a file folder, of course, you can use just two separate pieces of thin cardstock. This is cardstock, but it's very, very thin. So first thing I'm going to do is trim this down. This is where we decide, you know, how wide I want it to be. I might as well use one of my pre-made ones just so that I have them all the same size. There we go. And that's just under six inches in case anybody wants to know. I'm just eyeballing the whole thing. I'm not going for any particular size or anything like that. I'm going to trim this down and there we have it. How easy is that? <laughs> That's all we need. Now I need to create that bottom part of the matchbook, which is this little flap here, the closure kind of flap. So again, I'm going to use this And there we have it, made that little fold. It really doesn't matter how deep the fold is. So this is just over one and a half inches. But you can see here, it's totally up to you. This one's a little bit deeper than this one. I think it's probably better to have them a little bit deeper because they open and close much easier because these brads are holding everything down. So I made this one, I was in the process of making this one and you can see I even put my brads through and everything. But then I found because this is quite narrow here and the brads were in place holding everything down, you can see already this part wasn't opening much. So it was really hard to kind of pop this in. Whereas when you have a deeper one, you know, there's a whole lot more space between the bread and the opening. So you have all this space to easily open and close the matchbook. That's, you know, that's the whole point. So that's one thing to keep in mind. All right, next thing you can see now, this is uh, way too long. So now I'm going to trim this down and I don't want to trim it too short because then it's not going to properly sit in there and I don't want to trim it too long because it will be a nightmare trying to pop that in there. So I'm going to trim it about, that there is about one centimeter from the top of this flap here. So I know I keep changing metrics, I was talking inches, now I'm talking centimeters, but it's just approximate. I think I probably trimmed that off a little bit too short. I was supposed to leave a centimeter, but that's actually, oh, it's not too bad. Could have been longer, all right? But I don't wanna take things too seriously, so I'm just having fun and going with the flow. I'm going to round the corners, and now you'll see, because I've cut this too short, there's a little bit of a gap in there and basically all that means is if you have a look at this one when I close it when I open it there's no gaps this one which is another one I cut too short you see that a little gap is it a big deal my goodness it's definitely not a big deal so let's just enjoy this creative process for this to open and close very easily you have to have enough space from whatever you're going to put here to secure this in place so it's not opening and you have to have that space there and then also we don't want it too long we don't want it too short so that it doesn't sit in there at all so somewhere in between happy middle next thing i'm going to do is just ink the edges see what i mean you can just see it so much better this is a nice little relaxing 15 minute craft 
All right, let's move on to the next thing, which is uh, adding the brads or your little closure type thing. So as you have noticed on all of mine, I added brads. That's what it looks like at the back. And of course I can go ahead and put some washi tape there if I wanna hide that. Really doesn't bother me the back of the brads being visible. So that's the brads option. And you can notice how I'm more towards the bottom of the of this flap. So another thing you can do is this type of a closure. Just imagine it sort of upside down. So or you would have the bow kind of, it wouldn't be going up that way, it would be going down that way. Uh, but basically you just poke or punch two holes, perhaps there and there, you can see here, just two holes and then you, thread through a little bit of twine and tie a bow but the bow is going to be the right way up like that so that's one option another option which i think would look pretty pretty nice and it's just come to me now if you put a little piece of double-sided tape just down the bottom here or just a little bit of glue and you glue that bottom section down just so it's not opening all the way up because then nothing's gonna keep the matchbook closed. It has to be closed, like this has to be secured down the bottom. So if you just put a little bit of glue on the inside and then perhaps grab some baker's twine, I think this is called, I could be wrong. Let's call it crafter's twine. You just wrap around like this, tie a little bow there in the middle, and I think that would also be nice. I mean, it doesn't look like much now because there's nothing at the front. So anyway, that's another option. But of course, I'm opting for breads. That's the option that I really like the most. Uh, I, I mean, it's the only option I've tried. So really, just making it nice and simple. I'm just going to eyeball the placement of the breads. Something like that. I've made my markings. And the marks I made are about a centimeter from the edge. And I'm going to poke the holes and then choose the brads these brads are found in op shops they are kaiser craft brand and they have these nice big uh, brads but i don't know if they even make them anymore so i might do one of these and two of these pop those brads through there we have it and then on the other side we're going to secure the brads down and there we have it how easy and simple is that i really would have preferred this to be longer but i don't mind all right, next thing I'm going to do is quickly do something at the front before I attach my pages on the inside. So I'm going to embellish this and you might have noticed the formula that I use. I'm going to stick with it. It's just music paper, book page, a sticker, a little something and this number stamp. It, it can be anything. It can be a little sentiment. It can be what have I got here on my desk. Let's see. Uh, a little sentiment like this, you know. It can be some of these cut out little uh, words, you see, kind, loving, whatever. What else? Here's another thing that I have. There's um, mini pop sticks, I think they, they're called. And I just glue down words and things. So this would be called sacred space, you know, something, anything. It doesn't have to be a, a specimen number. But that's what I did for these. And I think it looks really cool. And it's really simple. What? One, two, three, four, five elements. That's all you need. I do have a collage formula video. And I'm going to link it uh, up here or in the description box if you wanted to have a look. It just makes collage easy. All right, so I'm starting off with the music page. I'm gonna trim it down, and now I'm just gonna mark where I want to trim it down so that it's slightly shorter than the total of this cardstock. There's my little marking. I'm gonna trim that down. All right, perfect. And now I'm going to round the corners. And next thing I'm gonna do is just ink the edges See what a difference those inked edges make. It just looks so nice and beautiful and finished. All right, next thing I'm going to do is apply glue all over. Really, the edges are the most important. But anyway, I've got glue all over and I'm going to pop it down. Try not to glue it on my desk. So I'm just kind of popping that bottom piece down and I'm going to lift it off now and maneuver it in place. It's actually pretty perfect like usually I'll put, put it down and it'll be completely wrong so then I would have to move it but this is looking good and now I'm simply going to turn it around and wrap this so we're just gluing this down to the back 
nice and easy that's the back i like how that looks it's upside down if you can read notes this to me i can't tell the difference but the only way i know if something is the right way up is if it's got numbers or letters that is looking really nice ah, look at that all right next rip up a little book page and ink the edges if you want that looks quite nice probably could be a little bit shorter yes i think i like that better next thing i need is a little sticker or just a little something there on the side next thing i'm gonna grab a piece of this paper and this is also a sticker it's gonna go there and then i'm gonna go into my little box of all sorts of different stuff and i can already see some of those stamped things oh even this even something like this but it kind of doesn't really make sense i think because i have those botanical images something like this like a i don't know does that make sense probably not but i really like that so that's what i'm going with i want ripped edges and now just playing around with the placement i might ink some edges all right i'm gonna start off with gluing this onto that it's a sticker so perfect this is from taperlogy and I love how the sticker is sheer, so you can actually see the graph underneath. Perfect. All right, I'm going to glue this down. And now I'm going to decide placement for the rest of my pieces. I think that kind of looks good. So that's overlapping the sticker. And this is overlapping this little piece here. So when I'm happy with the placement, I kind of just mark. I'm going to start with the sticker. So I'm marking where the sticker begins. And with these types of stickers, rather than removing the whole thing all at once, I just do a little bit. So now only, only the bottom part is sticky. So I can move this around and play around with the placement. So, and then place it down. So that's sticky. That's not. And now I can just kind of move it up this way. Perfect. That's done. And now just deciding where this goes. So I kind of look at the writing. I can see here frame side and I can see homestead. And now I know where to place this. Something like that. And now for the last piece, you know, it can go up there. That also looks good. It can go here. Not so good. I like to have it overlapping this and going off to the side here. All right, glue that down. And there's my little collage done. Looks quite nice especially if you're making a little series and they all have the same kind of elements. You can see this one can't fit in, but you know, you can see we're repeating the same thing, book page, sticker, a little something and a little something, a little sentiment, let's say, and they're all done the same way. All right, next, the pages. Okay, so the pages for the inside, there's a few different options that you can do. If you're going for the true matchbook look, you want the pages bound in there. So with this one here, you can see the pages are bound together with the brads down here. So the pages open up this way, kind of like matches that are stuck down in there, right? So the pages are opening up this way. You can crease them down and you can journal, of course, on both sides. All right, that's option number one. Option number two, the pages are bound up here. So I've sewn the pages together, but I didn't sew it through the cardstock. I've sewn them on together separately. And then I glued it down just this bottom page here using double-sided tape. And in this option, the pages flip up that way. Option number three, pages are bound here on the side and they open to the side like a, like a standard journal. I like all the options, to be honest. And for this video, I already know I'm not going to do this one because I've already done my brads. I mean, I can always take the brads out and punch through all of the pages. But since I've already placed the brads down, I'm not going to do this option. If you want to do this option, of course, you trim down your paper, you pop, pop it in there and then you do the brads. So now I can decide, do I want it to flip up or do I want it to flip to the side? And I think I'm just going to go with the side. If you choose to do the side, you can see how my pages are slightly above this closure here. Slightly above, so that the pages are not being uh, tucked inside. This is closing it, you know, fully. If you want to do the top binding, then the pages can most definitely live in there because the pages are flipping up and not to the side. I mean, you could do it. You could do it either way. It really doesn't matter what you choose, whatever works for you, whatever 
speaks to you the most, that's what you go with. I am gonna go with the side opening pages. So just using some tea dyed paper, I wanna see when I fold it in half how wide it's going to be. And that's actually perfect size. Oh, look at that, perfect. So I did four folded pages which if you're just using single pages, you're not folding the pages. Like in all of my other ones that I did, the pages are just single pages, they're not folded pages. So depending on which method you choose, just for a reference, there's eight single pages in here. Let's pretend that's cut down. It's just eight single pages that I'm using. All right, now I'm just going to double check again. I think I might have to trim it down just a little bit. And yes, it's kind of just poking out here just a little bit. So I'm just going to cut a sliver off. That's good. I like to have a little edge all around. And now I'm going to mark where I need to cut this down because the pages are way too long. As I said before, for this side binding, I want to have a little bit of space there. So just mark myself where I need to trim that off, just there. There we have it. And now with this off cut, I can do something like this. So of course I'm or a little booklet like this. So I'm going to keep that. And now let's check our little signature. Perfect. I'm going to ink the edges so you can see. There we have it, edges are inked so you can see a little bit better, a bit of a margin on all sides. And now you can secure these pages together by doing a three hole pamphlet stitch, or you can staple them together, or I'm going to sew them together. And here we go, my little booklet is sewn. I just did two straight stitches straight down. All right, now I'm going to glue this down. So you can glue the whole back page down, but I'm not going to because we know we can utilize this side as well when you're journaling. So I'm just going to apply a thin strip of double-sided tape or even just a bit of glue will do, but here comes the double-sided tape. Remove the backing. And now if I go to stick that down, and if I stick it down wrong, uh, then it will be really hard to peel it off and it will damage the project. So I apply a little bit of glue stick and that glue stick gives me a bit of movement. Press down and there we have it. And now when it closes, perfect. How easy, how quick and how simple. I just love this as a little junk journal companion, as a little gift, a little something. Okay, now I just quickly wanted to discuss when you're making a larger one and your file folder isn't long enough, you know, file folders are only a certain length and you might need a longer file folder and you don't have one. All you do is just hinge two large pieces of uh, cardstock together. So you can see here, I have hinged using washi tape. I'm just gonna use this piece to demonstrate. So let's say you have your two large pieces. I'm doing a mini version here, but let's pretend these are two large pieces, right? And then you would hinge them together. We're just joining here. You can use washi tape, masking tape, fabric. You can use the offcut. You can glue the two pieces in like this. But because I have a leftover piece and I think it's long enough, I'm gonna use washi tape perfect cut off the excess and there we go two pieces have been hinged together and now we do the bottom we flip it up round the edges ink the edges so you can see and now i just kind of marked i can sort of see where it ends so this is probably going to be too long but i just marked where i'm going to trim that off and trim and now just check if you're holding down here that's a bit too long so i'm going to trim it down a bit more and that's a lot better all right, so that's what I wanted to show you hinging wise. And now that I'm here, I might as well finish this one off and I'm gonna use the twine instead of the brads. And I'm going to bind the signature up here. We're just doing something different. So eyeballing it here, there's my twine. And now I'm gonna attempt a bow. There we go, that'll do. And now pages, trim some pages down, fold them in half because I'm gonna do a three hole pamphlet stitch. So I need to trim it down and trim it there as well. And here we go, that fits perfectly in there, but I have to round the edges and ink. And perfect, so I'm gonna bind that in there, but because I'll be covering this as well, I might just add a little bit of reinforcement on the outside too. There we go, just a bit more reinforcement. And now just using embroidery floss, pop my signature in there and do a three hole pamphlet stitch, starting off with the three holes middle side and side or top and bottom and off we go
this one can go back in my little tab over here of bits and pieces when I need something for quick binding that can go in there and now tie a knot and a double knot and let's see does it work it works perfect and now of course we have to do something here so I'm gonna go off camera finish this off you know what I'm gonna do I'll be right back I'm gonna do something different And here we go, that went a completely different direction than I had planned. What was I doing here? I don't know, maybe like a little landscape. But anyway, I, I like how it looks and it's quite fun. And here we go, you open it up and of course you know what's inside. All these cool pages, you see, bound in using a three-hole pamphlet stitch right there at the top. Pretty cool. And then that can close very easily and open very easily. Perfect, that's what we want. And now that I'm here, I just want to give you some more ideas. This is actually what gave me an idea for this project. These were pre-made. It was a pre-made little matchbook album kit. Uh, and it was like just white. It was just white like this. And then I applied uh, some pretty textured paper and the brads down the bottom. And basically what this is, this can't actually close. So I'm not sure that I, I don't know how I feel about that. What this one uh, came with, these are all my bits and pieces that I put in there. And they came with this kind of like file folder layout, right? There's four pieces. Is it very practical to use? Probably not. I just put in some different types of little things that, you know, you could pull out and use in journaling sessions and, and stuff like that. You could perhaps have, this is a bit of fabric here at the back. You could perhaps have named tabs. It's just an idea. It isn't very practical because it's not like you can fit a whole lot in there because everything is held with the brads. What would you use it for? I'm not sure. But I like the idea. A little file folder, ephemera, a little thing. And I did them all following the same kind of, you know, putting the same bits and pieces in there, some stickers and all that sort of stuff. So I got this from an op shop and then I thought I'm going to make it into something, something cool, something fun. And that's how I kind of came onto this idea. So I think it's a really cool, nice, simple, quick 15 minute little thing that you can do in all different sizes and you can just go ahead and just uh, make a little series. I think it's going to look beautiful as a part of a larger project or journal. This one's empty, but you know, uh, I was using this cover for, uh, to make the correct size because I wanted it to fit perfectly in there. And if you're still here, I think there's also another cool idea that can be further developed. I just didn't have time for this video. Imagine making the matchbook, but in a hardcover format, and you would have spines so you will have a spine at the top spine at the bottom and then you can bind two signatures for example up there because the the limitation with these little journals or notebooks is that it's quite thin like you can't put a whole stack of pages in there unless you make a little spine so they would that would be the next step up you make a little spine and then you can fit more pages or you can do the ultimate where you have this is just for demonstration obviously it's not the correct size you wouldn't be using a book you'll be using pieces of cardstock and then making a spine up the top and making a spine down the bottom and having that closure i'm probably uh, making this way more complicated than it actually is but anyway there's an idea and in case you're wondering i was trying to do a crackle effect because i have this crackle medium and I've had it for 10 years and I thought, okay, it's time to use it up. So anyway, that's what I was trying here. And I'm not yet sure how I feel about this. If you enjoyed this idea, then you're going to love this video linked up here. Seven simple junk journal ideas. Have a look at that next. Please let me know what you think. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.